Today I'm going to review Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell was released in 1974. However, it was made in 1972, but was held back two year. It's the seventh in the series of Frankenstein films that Hammer did, and final film to star Peter Cushion as the Baron. Ralph Bates played the Baron in Horror of Frankenstein, the previous film. So Peter Cushion was back after a five year gap. Last time was in 1969, with Frankenstein was being destroyed. However, this would be the final film in the series. The film was directed by Terence Fisher, and this would be his final film that he directed. It was written by John Elder, music by James Bernard. The film runs 99 minutes, and only cost £137,000. It was released in some areas with Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter. However, the film had disappointing returns at the box office. It was released on DVD and Blu-ray uncut. David Prowse would play the monster again. He was also the monster in the last film, Horror of Frankenstein with Ralph Bates. He would later act with Peter Cushion again, three years later in the film Star Wars, as Darth Vader and Peter Cushion would play Grand Moff Tarkin. Sean Bryant, like Ralph Bates, was hoped to be the next Hammer star as Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee were getting older. Peter Cushion was 59 at the time when he made the film and was in poor health but insisted on doing his own stunts, jumping on the back of the monster. The film stars Peter Cushion as Baron Frankenstein, Sean Bryant as Dr Simon Helder, Madeline Smith as the Angel and David Prowse as the Creature. It also stars... Bernard Lee, Peter Madden and Patrick Troughton. Hey Phil, that's the second Doctor out of Doctor Who. Yes Bones, he was one of the best Doctors. Why the hell does he always play scruffy fuckers? <laughs> so the film is set in a mental asylum where Peter Cushion's blackmail on the head of the asylum. And this guy who's a fan of Baron Frankenstein's work gets put in this asylum and he ends up meeting with Peter Cushion's Baron and they both cooperate on making this monster. So this is sort of like a end of an era sort of film. It's the last one that Terence Fisher directed. It's the last time Peter Cushing plays the Baron. And Hammer Films only made a couple of more horror films before they stopped making them. That was The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires and To the Devil a Daughter. They made a few others like The Lady Vanishes. But they were the last two proper horror films that they made. And then they didn't uh, make any more horror films for ages. So in this film it takes about 17 minutes before you see Peter Cushion. But the first time we see Peter Cushion it's a great entrance. Doctor. Go back to your rooms now. There's nothing more for you to see. So in this film, with it being Cushion's final film, his performance is good, plays the character as though he's like tired. And there's a lot of references in the film to him looking tired. And indeed the actor was in Ill, Ill health at the time. His wife had died and he was looking really frail. And with it being set in a mental asylum, it's kind of like emphasised that his character's cracking up a little bit. That all his defeats in the past have broken him. Next time? Of course. We'll discuss the details later. For the moment, we must get this place tidied up so that we can start afresh. Now, we shall need new material, naturally. Herr Adler in 106, perhaps. He has a shocking idea at the time he's going to use his creature that he's made. He's going to have it have sex with Angel, uh, played by Madeline Smith. Because he's, he's wanting to have the creature have a child. That's a really sick idea. And it's another indicator that he's cracking up. If a new version of his true self could be created, huh? In the normal way, by mating. You can't mean it. What alternative would you suggest? But who with? Sarah. Sarah? She is not subnormal, either physically or mentally. Ye fancy! Frankenstein was gonna let the bloody monster shag Madeline Smith. Bloody monster was in for a treat. Lucky bastard. <laughs> Yeah, he gets stopped before he can shag her bones. Yeah, the poor bloody monster getting stopped from shagging her. The bloody monster has no bloody luck. 
está con los rastrados. <laughs> the monster's played by David Prowse again. It looks good. It looks like a proper monster. However, there is a few faults. It's too hairy. Looks a bit odd. And the body does look at times a bit rubbery. Like the arms look a bit odd. But it is good makeup. It does look good. It's a better monster than horror of Frankenstein. And you actually feel sorry for it. Although I think this film's underrated. It is a good film. It does have a few bad points. The film does look cheap at times. And it, it's confined to sets. So there's not there's not many um, there's not much outside footage. Basically set in the asylum, so you, you see the same sets a lot. However, it is one of the goriest films. There's lots of gore in this. The the brain transplant scene's really gory. You see a lot of the brain in inside the, the skull. The monster kills people with glass so you see go there and the, the ending's quite shocking where the, the inmates in the asylum attack the monster and they rip them to pieces so you see chunks of, of go in the hands that that was surprisingly gory that and although Cushing does look frail in this film he still gives a good performance in this film you, you see his hands again they're all burned and that's because of the fire from the previous film, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. And he has like a strange wig as well. There's a lot of criticism about Cushion's wig at the time. But it does sort of like make sense. If he's been in a fire, maybe his hair burned. So his character is officially wearing a wig in this film. So that sort of like makes sense. Hey, why the hell did Peter Cushion pick that bloody wig? Walking around like bloody Danny LaRue. Look soft as bloody shit. I'm at the candy store's den, down Paradise Road. So I'm glad the series ended on a good film. Could have been better, it could have had a bigger budget, that would have helped. But I really enjoyed it. It's another one of them 70s films that are very enjoyable. And I think out of 10 I'd give this one 9. 9 out of 10. I didn't think it was a bit like it. Really good film, Phil. Gets 10 out of 10. Better than these modern bloody horror films. So that's all the Frankenstein Hammer films that I've reviewed on the channel. And I'll do a special video, like I will with the, the Dracula Hammer films, where I'm ranking them in order. Yeah! So look out for that one. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. We shall see. Let's hope it's he who sees. He who sees? Sorry. <laughs> you see. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny, I must say. <laughs>